the AE of a cordial air and a good evening to you all. The nights are drawing in fairly fast now, aren't they? And the spirits are stirring again. So this year, hopefully, with COVID under control, I'm going to do the Spirits of Sound tours at Halloween. Now, in light of the COVID epidemic, I'll actually be looking into all the, the natural disasters, diseases and plagues that have troubled Kells and its people over the last five or six thousand years, in fact. Now, in a town that's steeped in history, this innocuous enough looking wee monument behind me pretty much often always gets overlooked in the story of Kells, but it has its own important story to tell. While you won't see it now in the dark of night, this side panel of the monument actually refers to the death of Olivia Stevenson, the first wife of the sixth Lord Hedford. And in fact, this monument was erected by Lord Hedford's second wife, Frances McNaughton, in 1854. Now the monument itself has done, around, done the rounds around Kells. When I was growing up, it was across the road outside the Catholic Church. But what's fascinating about this monument is what it represents. Thomas Taylor, the sixth of the Thomas Taylor line in Kells, married Olivia Stevenson in 1822, and she gave him nine children before dying of cholera in 1834, during the very first cholera outbreak in Western Europe, which had came on the ships from India. Now this cholera epidemic was a little bit like COVID. It didn't respect your wealth and obviously poor Olivia, very well to do. She also died of the waterborne disease as did many, many people around Kells, mostly the impoverished. And the second cholera epidemic swept through Europe in the 1840s and continued to kill people, particularly in urban areas. Now at the time, everyone believed that cholera was an airborne disease. But in 1852 in London, a young scientist by the name of John Snow. He believed that there was another cause of the cholera and he mapped out the worst places in London for people dying from this cholera epidemic and it looked like it was coming from the water. The local councils refused to believe him and they refused to cut off the water to the local pumps. But people kept dying and eventually they were persuaded to take the pump handles away and people stopped dying. So they realised by 1853 cholera was a waterborne disease. At the same time this was happening, the British had discovered the key and secret to making concrete which had been lost since Roman times. And in 1852, the first major concrete project carried out in Ireland took place on the Drogheda docks. Now within just two years, this concrete was being used in Kells. Just soon after John Snow had discovered the causation of cholera and concrete had arrived in Ireland, in 1854, Francis MacNaughton erected this monument complete with minuscule waterfront to her predecessor, Olivia Stevenson. But with a population of over 4,000, most of them living in complete abject poverty, the main water pumps in Kells were all surrounded by cesspits, rubbish heaps, and were downhill from the graveyards. Now, just two years after Lady Olivia's death in 1836, the Poor Law Commission for Ireland reported that Cannon Street here and the suburbs of Kells in general contained the greatest misery they had ever seen anywhere in any country. And now that was a full decade before Westminster's genocidal starvation of the Irish people. And so when they did start to recover in the early 1850s, cholera again hit Kells just two years after the waterfront had been erected to Lady Hedford. So many began dying of cholera in 1856 that a large cholera plot was dug in the Church of Ireland graveyard. Almost 60 feet in length and 20 feet deep. People died so fast that they were taken from their homes and placed into boxes and brought directly for burial here. No funerals allowed under the conditions. Whether it be individuals or families brought to the burial plot, once they got there, the carts that carried the boxes were tilted forward and the bodies slipped out from the boxes and into the pit below where they were straightened out and a few centimetres of dirt buried over them. There are anecdotal reports that a lot of these people weren't actually dead, even when they were buried. Hundreds died in just a few short months. And this was the time of our grandparents' grandparents who survived it and witnessed these terrible events. So while Lady Hedford has a fairly innocuous little water font to her memory, she's well remembered in many other places. But for the poor unfortunates in the hundreds who died during the 1850s cholera epidemic in Kells, they're forgotten 
as is their burial place, the Kells Cholera Plot. <laughs>